Good morning. This was an interesting week at the state capitol. Um, so I thought it was time to get back to updating you regularly from the capitol. So this is the first week of legislative session. We start always uh, constitutionally. We start on the first Monday of the first full week of February. And it starts with the governor's state of the state address. So Monday we showed up and the governor laid out um, his policy priorities for the year and released a budget, um, which actually I didn't get to see till later in the day, so I didn't get to compare it. But uh, we heard his priorities and then we hit the ground running with seeing bills and, and many other things. So I wanted to cover just a few things um, that happened this week. First of all, just on the state of the state, I mean, my two biggest takeaways are um, number one, you know, we really are going to have to continue to elevate the public health emergency and the challenges of COVID. You know, I know that our numbers are dropping and we're hopeful that that's going to reduce the challenges, but people are still facing the virus and it's still affecting and disrupting workplaces and schools. And I know our healthcare workers are exhausted. Um, so I think public health mitigation, um, if you care about that, you have to speak up on it and you have to express yourself. Definitely the governor made it clear that it's each person for themselves and that uh, didn't even talk about COVID or the health crisis. So that really was disappointing to me. I'd like to see addressing our unbelievable deaths over the last year and the ongoing challenges we're facing. Um, the other big thing is that, you know, I believe in public uh, funding for public schools and very much he made it clear that he wants to push for um, a system that would take public funds and put them towards private schools. And I have so many concerns about that in terms of accountability, but especially want to point out that, you know, Oklahoma is still not spending um, even the average of our region um, on per, per, per pupil. So while we've made bigger investments in education, we've also had more students. And so our per pupil expenditures still fall between $600 and $2,000 uh, per year less than our neighboring states. Um, we got to start there. Um, you can't say that a system isn't doing its job if we're not putting the resources there that are needed. And certainly my kids are in the public schools and um, there's certainly challenges, but what I see the opportunities um, of, of so many children across the state and amazing educators who've done great work over the last year. Um, I wanna just mention that bills are coming through quickly. We see things in committee first, so that's very active this week. Normally the first week we take it easy, but we have a new floor leader who wanted to get rolling. And um, so hopefully we can spread out the work some we saw 20 plus bill in, bills in finance, quite a few in military and veteran affairs that I serve on, and I'll expect the rest of my committees to meet next week. So if you have specific bills you're following, certainly let my office know what you're watching and what you're concerned about or what you're in favor of um, so that I can have a note about that. There's a lot of bills that come through where we haven't heard from anyone about them. Maybe they didn't know they exist. And I try to reach out when I know people care about issues, but it's hard for me to keep up. Um, if you're someone who maybe feels overwhelmed by all the bill data and uh, all the information, I just encourage you to find advocacy groups that speak to the issues that matter to you. So we have so many uh, groups, be they chambers of commerce, be they advocates for people with disabilities, um, be they criminal justice reform folks um, that are watching bills at the Capitol. So if you have a specific issue you're concerned about, they can help you narrow down to know which bills are really a danger or a plus um, which bills are moving and help you know when to speak up. Um, so I encourage you to follow those groups. Um, I used to run Oklahomans for the Arts, so just put in a plug that if you care about the arts and arts education, follow Oklahomans for the Arts. Um, let's see, next up uh, this week we saw American Rescue Plan proposals. So I'm on the subgroup that, that looks at Health and Human Services funding. So the state received $1.87 billion in American Rescue Plan that we have quite a bit of discretion over. And the governor, uh, in collaboration with the legislature, has set a process by which we get to help set the priorities. Um, so very much the governor and the co-chair set the, the overall arching goals and some of the short-term goals. Um, but within that, one of the big identified needs is the shortage of nurses. Um, our hospitals and all other entities who are in healthcare have been dealing with the fact that um, for decades uh, we have not been keeping up with the demand for nurses. And so the first set of investment proposals we looked at yesterday were for improving nursing education um, in various institutions across the state. And I was really glad to hear these proactive higher education institutions and other entities that are working on how to grow who they can reach and who gets access to it's a great career path, 
Um, we want people who are interested in it and ready to be able to pursue that path and, and for it to be affordable and available and you know, where they are. Um, so those will be moving forward to the full committee. Hopefully we'll get moving on some other issue areas. Certainly I wanna deal with, um, just wanna mention the mental health crisis that's come along with COVID. We already had some of the highest rates of substance use issues and mental health disorders in the country um, and COVID has only exacerbated that. So we have to work on expanding access and um, treatment options for folks. Um, our mental health caucus met this week for the first time. That was a real boost. I'm so pleased we added some new co-chairs. So Representative Josh West and I were the founding co-chairs last year. We're so pleased that Senator John Haste and Representative Mer Marilyn Bell joined us as co-chairs this year. So we've got all um, bicameral, bipartisan representation, um, which is wonderful. And we wanted to set aside a few priorities this year. Um, we were all these folks work on different aspects of mental health. We have folks who are real interested in veterans and their mental health. We have folks who are former educators where that's their priority. Um, but we wanted to set a few priorities as a caucus. So we decided to really focus on youth suicide and prevention of youth suicide. There's been an alarming increase in suicide and suicidal thoughts. Um, our emergency rooms are seeing an outrageous number of youth um, having challenges. We wanna make sure they can get the help they need and that we can get um, them help earlier so that we're not seeing them in emergency rooms. And then connected with that and with all our other challenges is the behavioral health workforce. The Healthy Minds Policy Initiative's done some great research to see, you know, we have a very few psychiatrists, psychologists, and other behavioral health uh, professionals in our state. So we're looking at how we can support folks going into that field and also make sure we're supporting the people who are in the field um, to keep them here. So a lot of this is that systems level um, work that we have to do to make sure people can get what they need. Um, so I'm really pleased for the caucus getting rolling. We have a lot of legislators involved um, and I'm pleased for what we can get done this year. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention is yesterday we had a loft report. I'm on the Legislative Office of Fiscal Transparency Committee and that committee looks at investigative um, analysis of our, what's happening in our agencies and different programs. And it's a way for us as legislature to get a little deeper dive into information. Um, we have a lot of information at our fingertips, frankly, but sometimes it's only from one perspective or we haven't been able to dig deep enough. And so there was a, a quick study done of the medical marijuana industry. Um, you may know that since state question 788 passed in 2018, um, it's been very hard to, to, to get in place the regulations and the operating systems needed for that industry. Very much the state question had the industry start right away. Licenses had to be inter introduced immediately almost. And compared to other states, they spent, some, some states spent two to four years um, implementing their medical marijuana program. Oklahoma had it up and running in four months. So we're having a lot of fallout from um, not having things in place. So right now the, the Medical Marijuana Authority is working on what's called a seed to sale inventory. And that's um, something that was introduced last year but got put on a temporary injunction by the courts that will require a certain inventory process. So we know that from seed to sale um, where that uh, product is going. And there's a lot of concern about illicit activity. And then there's a lot of folks who are running um, very carefully running safe businesses. And we gotta make sure that we're helping them and helping them not be undermined by folks who are doing things illicitly or unsafe uh, in unsafe ways. Uh, I didn't realize quite the scale of collaboration it takes to monitor the industry because you've got the Medical Marijuana Authority looking at the licenses, the business licenses. You've got the tax commission that's working separately on all the tax issues. Um, we've got o OBN, which is the Bureau of Narcotics looking at illicit activity. So there's a lot of interconnections. We're hearing about water issues, um, especially in the rural areas as well. So Department of Environmental Quality is involved. Um, so anyway, it's a big issue. I'm trying to make sure, you know, we have one of the most accessible programs in the country. Um, we want legal, legitimate businesses to be able to operate without unnecessary burdens. We want people to get access to what they voted on was a medical marijuana program. So we definitely want people to be able to access that without burden. So that's what I'm speaking up for. I'm concerned they did mention a, man, a possible moratorium on licenses. And I'm very concerned about that, how that would affect um, patients and businesses and the markets. So um, I'm watching that closely. If you have interest in that, let me know.
Uh, we have a constituent survey out right now. So if you live in Senate District 30, either now or in the what will become Senate District 30 uh, when it's redistricted this November, I would love to hear from you. Send me your feedback. Um, I'll put the survey link in the uh, caption or in the comments so that you can respond and give me your feedback. And anytime you're welcome to come visit, we just put that great video up that my interns made of how to get into the office. We're on the fifth floor South Hall. Glad to see you in person. You can make an appointment in advance or just drop by. Um, but you also can call or email. Anyway, I hope you have a great uh, weekend and glad to hear from you again uh, as we get ready for the next week of session. Take care.